Okay, so good good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Manos Brilakis from uh, Dallas VA Medical Center and UT Southwestern Medical School. Today it's November 3rd of 2015. It's our 16th complex coronary interventions webcast. And we're delighted and honored to have today Professor Lezek Briniarski present to us. Dr. Briniarski is from the Department of Cardiology and Hypertension of the Jagiellonian University Medical College in Krakow, Poland, and one of the world experts in CTO PCI. Dr. Briniarski will present some exciting CTO cases and will discuss about the lessons from those cases. So, Lezek, welcome again, and thanks very much for doing this webcast. Uh, thank you very much, Manos. Uh, this is a great honor for me to be uh, with you, despite the uh, very long distance that, that we are now and, and the, the difference in the time. It's the, uh, very good that we can uh, share uh, our knowledge. So, uh, if you want, uh, we will start the first recorded case of the retrograde approach, okay? Perfect. Uh, Okay, and uh, I will show you some some. There are some pictures from Krakow. Okay, but I think that it uh, will be uh, good to skip some some scene to to don't see uh, all the uh, film. Uh, I would like to uh, present. Uh, this is the first case. It was case uh, sent that to us from the other cut lab uh, because we have a network that uh, the people who uh, don't have uh, such a great experience city on this narrow center sent uh, the patient to us and that. This patient was uh, the 66 year old male with diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesteremia, as typical risk factor. No reason, good uh, LV function, and uh, he was previously treated by PCI of uh, marginal branch, and uh, he was admitted uh, to us after uh, unsuccessful procedure. Uh, in the other cut lab, the uh, function of uh, left ventricle was uh, very good. Ejection fraction about 60. Uh, angina CCS class 2. Uh, no uh, contractility disturbance. So, uh, very clear indications to uh, open the vessel. And uh, JCTO score was calculated to be free. And did I say this correctly? Did he have a magnesium stand in the past, or? Uh, sorry? Uh, did he have a previous stand? On the previous uh, screen, there was a previous stand he had in the same vessel, maybe, or? He had the previous attempt in the other, another cut lab, and also, okay. he had, uh, as you see, the um, stenosis in the middle uh, of the LAD, but the, uh, we performed uh, FFR of the stenosis to be sure that it's not uh, critical and uh, FFR was 0 0.85. So it was not critical. And we will see the angio in a few minutes. There's the echo. Echo was okay, but the patient was a little obese. So the visibility was not so high. And uh, of course, we started with the procedure with two long uh, sheets, and we injected, injected the contrast to simultaneously to bone coronary arteries. And you will see in the minute, yeah, this is the injection. You can see long occlusion of the uh, right coronary artery starting from the uh, proximal part and the end is uh, up to the uh, cracks. It looks very long. So it was treated previously by the anti approach. It was unsuccessful. 
so even in such case I decide to I decided to go uh, integrate leaf first with the uh, wire escalation technique and the strategy was if the, we will fire to switch to retrograde approach and you can see that after some minutes uh, of working this is the picture from the integrated approach uh, first i started with field xt then i switched to ultimate free gram wire and then to uh, confianza and after uh, some probe it was unsuccessful you see how the wire is knuckling within the artery and i uh, was outside of the bezel uh, architecture so we decided finally this is the maneuver with the wire and you can see here clearly that the wire is outside the uh, bezel lumen you you see yeah, it's, it's, a it's a Confianza wire that you have uh, now? The final it was the Confianza wire. So we decided to switch. You see it's uh, another position. So we decided to switch to retro. Lesek, how, soon did you, how soon did you decide that? Was it uh, uh, you try for a while for the undergrade or you quickly switched to retrograde or how long did you spend trying to open undergrade? So, uh, I, now it's, uh, it, it's dependent on the situation because if you have the situation that you have some progress, if you feel the wire is going through the uh, vessel, to the true lumen, so sometimes it's better to spend a little more time to, trying to go integrately, but uh, I completely agree with your strategy, with your uh, conception of the hybrid approach that after you know, 20 or 30 minutes, if the, any wire doesn't go, you should switch to retrograde to don't create the large dissection, to, to, to don't create the large, large subdimensional space. Because maybe sometimes we use a, a different technique than you, that we go to a parallel technique. But finally, I completely agree with you that hybrid approach is the, the, the best option. Yeah, and I think, you know, hybrid doesn't tell you, I mean, it tells you to change something, but whether you're going to do parallel wiring or whatever, I think the principle is that you do something different if something doesn't work. And I think everyone agrees, as you said, that if something doesn't work, do something else versus try for many hours to do the same thing. Yeah, that's right. So in such a case, we decided to switch uh, to retrograde. Uh, so this is... Uh, moment. Uh, this is also the very important to check the ACT all the time during the procedure and this is a preparation for the retro. We always start, oh you see, I switch a little bit back because uh, it was very tortuous uh, vessel in this case, very tortuous uh, LAD, but the connection was Oh, large, but this is, uh, you see the, the how the tortoise is, and this is the passage uh, with the Scion uh, black wire. It was very easy to, to pass, but we should remember that sometimes it's better to use the septal connection, because in the case of the trouble of the dissection of the closure of such big uh, such big uh, artery, you, 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 you can go uh, to, the, to the very big, 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 big problems. So it's uh, very important to uh, go very gently and try to do, don't damage this, uh, this, uh, art, this uh, collaterals. They are very fragile sometimes, so it's, it's very difficult. Uh, and if they are very tortuous, it's uh, also the problem. But in such case, as you saw, it was possible you see the Scion black going through those uh, curvatures so it was uh, finally okay then yeah and after that it was not a problem to go retrograde with the Corsair and you see the Corsair dancing with, within the vessel uh, of 
I always try to uh, to go retrogradely with the, the true pure crossing technique. If it, this technique failed, I start to uh, reverse cut. And in such case, it was impossible to cross the lesion. So we decided to I see the some probe to uh, to enter retrogradely to integrate uh, wire, but finally, finally we decided here is the, this is a confianza wire. Okay. So you're still trying to go through to through, retrograde through to through to the other grade? Yeah, yeah. I tried, but it was impossible. So we decided finally, as you will see in a few seconds, okay. So I can ask you one, one second, I can ask you, because in the U.S. we don't have the Sion Black, can you tell us a little bit how is it is similar or different from the from the Sion or from the other wires? It's a very uh, good wire, it's the hydrophilic wire, very uh, slippy and uh, very uh, you can enter the very, very tortuous vessel. Okay. Here, here is the none to maneuver. Do you use something, some, sometimes did maneuver to go out with the, uh, with the balloon? Because we have used, as you see in such uh, case from the anti-grade approach, the balloon is the, the, for the economical reason. And uh, to, to go out with this balloon, when you have a short uh, guide wire, this is the non to maneuver. So you, you, you put the pressure with the saline and you flush the uh, catheter out. You saw this? Yeah, beautiful. That was very nicely done. You use sometimes those techniques? To be honest, we try to, to trap instead. We like the trapping more. Yeah. Uh, but in cases yeah. where you cannot trap, we, we use a technique as well. I think it's a little less reliable than the trapping, but definitely very good to do at some cases like this. Yes, but for the trapping, you should use the balloon. The balloon costs some money, and the water costs uh, nothing. <laughs> oh, yes. No, no, I agree. I agree with you. But the downside is, what sometimes we've done it and we lost the wire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Here but we right. switch right. to reverse cast, as you see. So the balloon is inflated. It was 2.5 balloon. We always start with a balloon like this to don't uh, create a too much space, sometimes you, you, you can see that the uh, wire are in the same uh, position, they are dancing together, uh, and uh, I tried to uh, introduce the wire into the true lumen, and finally, as you see, it was possible Yes, here is the moment that I have entered the Confianza retrograde to the uh, Antegrade uh, guide. And from this moment, this is the typical procedure to trap the uh, wire, to go with the uh, with the Corsair into the guiding catheter and to uh, introduce, uh, you see we go out with uh, this balloon, we uh, go retrograde, retrograde with the uh, Corsair and then we use the RG3 wire for externalization. This is the RG3 wire coming. Does it, does it qualify for contemporary reverse card? I guess it was a small enough balloon? It's 2.5. It's not too small, I think. Uh, if it failed, we uh, used the bigger, bigger, bigger balloon. There are some people who start with 3.0, 3.5 in the proximal RCA. But I'm still thinking that if we are not sure that we are within the lumen, Sometimes we are in the subintimal space, always, uh, in the majority of cases. So I think it's reasonable to start with 2.5. It's not so 
so small, but also not so 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 big. And this is the moment to uh, go out with the RG free wire, and from this moment uh, we can perform all the procedure integratedly. And it was done, so the we should remove a little uh, corsair very gently, and we can inject from the. Uh, we we should avoid the injection from the integrate to don't create a huge dissection, and uh, the injection from the uh, left system is helpful to have uh, a good position of the distal stand before the the, the cracks, and. As you will see in the few seconds, we have stented uh, all the vessel uh, with uh, drag looting stents, and I will show you the final uh, result. So where is the? The final result, I will see in a few seconds. Uh, this is the remote. Yeah, this is the remote. Seven French guides, right? Is that typical seven French guides? For, yeah, uh, we, we work with the seven French uh, guides, even uh, only with the case that we plan to use uh, IVUS. This is the final shot. You can see this is the competition of the flow from the right side to the distal uh, LAD. Sometimes it happened, but the patient was completely asymptomatic. And here you can see that flow is reversing. So the, uh, you can see uh, all the LAD. And uh, with our last injection to the right coronary artery, centered, and you can see the flow to the LAD. So it's uh, strange, but Sometimes the, the gradient of the uh, uh, of the pressure is is uh, such like this, but but it, it disappears. So this, the, I think, the very good uh, final result. The time of the procedure was 75 minutes, uh, approximately 4.5 grays. Uh, 4 so this is a this is a this uh, uh, presentation, and I I I I'm waiting for your comments. No, I think this was a wonderful case. Um, I congratulate on a very well done case and uh, great result in the end and great uh, demonstration of techniques. A um, couple of couple of thoughts and questions. Did the patient? I know it was a, a a single major collateral branch coming from the apex to the PDA. Did the patient have any uh, chest discomfort that you said ischemia or anything during the procedure, or he tolerated pretty well crossing the collateral? Very very well. So, so it said uh, us that, that there is some discomfort, but only small discomfort, not typical pain. So it was very comfortable to us to work with this. Great. And then and then um, it, it looks to me like you say you are trying to do more smaller, but for the reverse card, uh, you are trying to use as you said smaller balloons just to minimize the area of dissection. And how often do you see this is working when you, when you try to use a smaller balloon versus having to go to a bigger balloon? So uh, I think that in the half of the procedure, we can stop at the 2.5, but uh, in the other uh, half, we, we should go to the, to, to the uh, biggest one, even for 3.5 or, or 4 sometimes with the proximal RCA. Great. Right. Right. Okay, that was a wonderful case. I think I think it was very instructive. And uh, the other thing that was very nice is that you tried first uh, one technique, undergrade didn't work, then you just uh, changed your strategy, and that uh, led to the final success. So very very well done, and within a fairly you know short period of time, very efficient procedure as well, with low fluoroscopy and radiation exposure. So it was great. It was great great case. Thanks for sharing with us. And as you said in the last webcast that I saw, uh, you would like to present some data about the Novacross microcatheter. So uh, I briefly uh, would to sum summarize my talk during the TCT about the Novacross, okay? Perfect. So uh, it's the completely new device. This is the uh, guide wire positioning and support microcatheter because we have uh, three uh, loops made from ethanol, they are three dots that are visible in the X-ray, 
and the, those helical scaffolds uh, provide uh, 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 some uh, anchoring and we can also extend uh, the distal tip up to five centimeters with the micro catheter. So it's the similar micro catheter as the Corsair. In this, the, the length is 150, uh, 135 centimeters. Crossing profile is low, and uh, this is compatible with all uh, used guide wires. And the recommended guide catheter for this is uh, seven or more French. And we performed the first in human uh, Nova Cross uh, uh, study. It was done by uh, four, four European center, two in Israel, uh, one Belfast, Simon Walsh, and uh, our center in Jagged One University. So finally, we enrolled 24 patients in the period between March and September 2014. And uh, in 12, uh, 22 patients, uh, Nova Cruz was used. And clinical follow-up up to 30 days was obtained in 100% of the patients. This is the uh, one of the example uh, from from the uh, for, from uh, one of the procedure. This is uh, uh, occluded uh, LAD, and you can see the Nova Cross system <coughs> will be inside this open loop, and this microcatheter going out and. Uh, uh, Michael got it going through the uh, vessel and the final result after stenting was perfect. And I, after this presentation, I will show you also one, one in my case. This is the case of uh, Simon Walsh from uh, Belfast, this perfect result uh, after those procedure. And uh, of course, the selection criteria was uh, typical. The exclusion criteria was instant uh, CTO or autoscal CTO location because you you should have uh, some area to uh, to place this this device uh, and uh, as you can see in the uh, characteristics of the uh, patients that more uh, the majority of uh, of patients have a Difficult or very difficult, so in JCTO score, uh, 83% had uh, three or more uh, points, and the prior, uh, prior recorded attempt was uh, done uh, in 50% of cases, and the, the occlusion length, the, uh, in, it means uh, it was in mean uh, 25 uh, millimeters. So difficult or very difficult cases and uh, finally we have crossed the true men 77 percent of cases so i think for those repeated procedure and high jcto score it's not a bad uh, result and uh, the maneuverability of the occlusion uh, with the device and safe withdrawal and successful stent employment was uh, obtained in the same number of the patients. There was no mechanical damage and uh, good tip visualization, so no maces. And also, of course, there are some limitations of the study. This is the preliminary and small, and uh, technical approach was were limited only to integrated wire escalation because the, the first in human nature of the trial. QC was analyzed by, by the local operators. But uh, the 100% of penetration of proximal cap was obtained, and 77% of crossing of entire CTO. So I think that this is the uh, nice device, and uh, I would like to show you the uh, another uh, case uh, from. Uh, I will try to find. Yes. So, Andrew, a quick question on this, since we haven't used that system, but it looks very intriguing. So, essentially, you deliver it over a standard wire to the area yeah. proximal to the CTO, right? Yes. Yeah. And then, and then you uh, you press a button and you have the the three loops expand outside the catheter. Yes, this is the like the anchoring system. So Great. you can and then just do whatever. Yeah. Then you can use any wire you want to cross. Yeah, you want to cross. You can also use the parallel wire technique, but because it's possible to enter between those uh, three 
uh, loops with the another wire. Uh, and if you will, if you cross the occlusion, you can also enter with the distal tip because it's extended to five centimeters. So uh, with the, those uh, device, with this handle, you can uh, introduce the tip of the microcatheter uh, within the occlusion, so uh, it's, it's possible. Okay, and then it gives you a lot of support. How, how supportive is the device when you're trying to penetrate? It's pretty supportive. This is very supportive, and uh, I would like to present uh, another case that, of use the, the, the system. It was done also uh, by me uh, in our lab. Uh, this is the also uh, funny, uh, nice case. As you can see, this was a second attempt after eight uh, years. So it was the first attempt was done in 2007 of the right coronary artery. The patient was all the time, all the time symptomatic, so we included them in the, this trial with also clear indications: CCS3 uh, angina, ejection fraction uh, 55% with no uh, huge abnormalities of the contractility, and JCTO score was four. As, as you can see, this is the coronary angiography, good uh, left, uh, no uh, disease uh, within the left system, and uh, visualization of the distal part of the right coronary artery. And the uh, right coronary artery was uh, uh, occluded at the proximal part. You can see the very good collateralization from uh, proximal to the distal part. But it was tortuous vessel, so the degree within the the band within the occlusion was more than 40, 35 centimeters. And in this case, uh, if you this is two possibilities to anchor the the, the, uh, the right coronary jatkins or to use the more aggressive wire. But you can see also the lot of disease in the proximal part. So I decided to go with the uh, right uh, Jatkins. Uh, it was also due to the, this is the ECO, nothing special. And this is the, uh, our access, femoral access. I tried to use the escalation wire to introduce the system within the, uh, after it was BMW, then my uh, miracle was 4.5. Then Confianza uh, Pro and Confianza Pro. Uh, well, and this is the filmed approach, and you can see how you introduce the device into the artery. This is a, a, a guide wire, and then you go with this system. Yeah, this is a system. It's placed. It's enough. The three centimeters is is enough to place the system, and you can see the system is uh, the artery is anchored within the vessel, and you see how nicely it was possible to cross the vessel uh, with the uh, confianza to going to the true lumen. But after that. You see how the artery is tortuous. I have lost all the, my position, so the wire goes out. And here is the, the, the probe to trying to, to, to go a little deep, but with stiff wire, you, you can you see. So I lose everything. And uh, I try to uh, here you can see the system closed and the system open you you can see three small dots here the, the the system is open here is closed and finally I lose the 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 the, the wire within the occlusion you see and I tried to go with without this system with uh, another wires, but it was impossible. So I, de I decided to 
use the because it was uh, some space and I tried to go with Vista with the support Sign Blue Confianza Pro, but without this device, without support of this device, it was impossible. But after that, I recross with the Nova Cross. It was, you see, very gentle and very 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 quick. And after that, I decided to, uh, of course, to dilate this vessel with not introducing the, 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 the wire at the end. And this is a, a final result after stenting. So in such case like this, that you have a very proximal uh, closure, uh, occlusion uh, of the right coronal artery, also in the other part, also you, you can anchor all the system and uh, and very gently crossed, so it helped to center the, the wire and he, it helped to, to, to anchor this device. So we will see because now we are uh, uh, we are doing the trial of uh, for FDA 145 uh, cases will be included. Up to now I perform at 15. In the other center we have I think that we have 30 or 40 cases now. So we will finish, I think, at the beginning of the next year, and we will see the result, and it will be possible to 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 see how. Uh, I think that in some um, months or years to to sell the, this device uh, on the market. That was very nice. And then, so do you need a special landing zone? Like, how much space do you need to be able to advance the device to go in there? Do you need like 10 millimeters, 15 millimeters to get? Look like you didn't have much RCA there, approximately. It's three centimeters is necessary. It's three or more. Great. And I noticed also you 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 don't use much of the Gaia wires or everything. You know, here in the US now we're increasingly using the Gaias, and maybe with the with the Nova Cross you might have also good luck with the Gaia wires. That's your thoughts on that. Yes, that, that's right, because the Gaia wire we started to use at the end uh, of last year, and the case was done on the May of the, uh, the, the Gaia was unavailable in Europe, but now we, we uh, use the Gaia wires, and uh, uh, so uh, th there is very nice and very controllable uh, wires, so I like it. Perfect. And you said it's going through FDA review, so it might get in the United States, or is the FDA for, for Europe, or...? Is the, is the, 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 this device has the uh, C mark, so it's uh, approved in Europe, but okay, we, we, the FDA, FDA. Okay, great. Okay, that sounds great. We look forward. As you know, there are two devices right now in the U.S. with similar characteristics. One is called the Center Cross that, yeah. and the Mount Cross that has a, a little nitro little loop, and the other one is called the Prodigy, that's like a swan, a catheter with a balloon that kind of anchors itself. So I think this concept of support is very promising, and, and we look forward to having this device here as well. Yeah, that's right. And uh, after some successes, we should go to some failure. <laughs> so I would like to show the, 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 the case number two. This is a very interesting case of the uh, also stable angina patient with uh, uh, but this is a patient with depressed left ventricular function. This is the patient after STEMI and PCR validity and ICD implanted uh, with typical risk factors uh, with uh, positive viability and ischemia of inferior wall. So uh, also the clear indication to the attempt uh, of the right occluded right coronal artery. It was set, set second attempt. JCTO score was three, that means very difficult occlusion. And this case was proctored by me in the Silesian Heart Center in Zabrze. So when the fellow started the procedure, you can see that it was uh, Amplatz left catheter uh, uh, seated at the uh, distal part of the, at, at the proximal part of the occlusion. You, you can see here that is the some dissection starting after injection. So he was not sure, so he took uh, another catheter, right, Jatkins, and you can see the huge dissection from the proximal part of the occlusion. The occlusion was from the prox to the cell, uh, to the, to the uh, crux. 
and uh, here we you, we can see the the uh, contrast within the subliminal space. Huge dissection, huge. And uh, it was a question: what to do? Because we are, in such case we have three possibilities. The one is to stop the procedure. Yeah. The second one is try to use the IVUS to find the, the proper way, but it's very difficult to, to find the, uh, where we can enter. So we decided to switch to retro because it was some, but not very, very good uh, collaterals from the left. So I spent a lot of time uh, trying to, to find the uh, connection because it was very weak. So I used the septal surfing, also the tip injection to, to try to, to go. To, some of them were, were, were promising, some not. But finally, I was not able to, to connect and to, to cross the septal collaterals uh, uh, to the right. It was a lot of lot. Can I ask you, so sometimes when you have this dissection, if you get the wire, you might actually be able to redirect the wire with or without Ivers in the trulome. It looks like you might have some connection to the PDA there. Um, yes. Do you have to do that? Or, or? But I was not able, and finally, I have found uh, some connection with the right ventricle branch. You can see here, this is the tip injection. And you can see very thin and very tortuous collaterals going uh, from the uh, LAD to the uh, right ventricle branch and going to the to the right coronal artery. You can see here it was very good. I think that because the art was very close to this uh, the entry of the dissection. But you can see at this um, film how the, how torturous was was this this uh, collateral. But finally, I was able. You can see the, the next injection. I was able to go by this uh, finny collateral and go this study to the RCA. Uh, this machine uh, with uh, which I work uh, in the center has not possibility to uh, have a, uh, to freeze the, the, the scene, so it's recorded after that. So uh, having a, a pathway, I was uh, and the, uh, the the wire as the indicator, I was able to go from the uh, anti-grade site. Uh, with the uh, filter XT wire and then to exchange it to the software wire in this, in this moment. So we have uh, the wire from retrograde introduced by the uh, right collateral, uh, right ventricle branch to this star. And thanks for this, I was able to, to go uh, ante with integrated wire. This is the balloon uh, inserted. Uh, this study and this is the injection to the tip of the balloon to confirm that we are within the vessel architecture and after that the procedure was of course we stented first the the proximal part of the vessel then the distal part of course you you, you always and sometimes after some minutes or hours of working you find that it's not uh, the occlusion is not in the end, because as you see in this case, it was also PDA occluded, but I was able to wire the PDA and to finish with uh, the kissing wire technique and uh, having such results at the end, so preserving both uh, branches and all uh, artery, the, this is the final result and the uh, to summarize the procedure, the procedure time was two and a half hour, 41 minutes of fluoroscopy, radiation dose not so high, 1.4 gray, and the contrast uh, 300 cc. So, so it is an example 
that you if you do with, if you deal with the CTO you, you you can start with the trouble at the beginning from the beginning of the case and interesting is that so sometimes we have this dissection but some people are saying maybe it's a good thing to have them because I mean what well, in this case just a wire escalation but sometimes you can do a very efficient um, um, you know reverse cut there because you created a nice dissection on the undergrade direction yeah, that's so right. It's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it can be a useful thing, like you saw in your case as well. That's right, and uh, we even uh, very often we we deal with with some complication. We deal with some dissection. So, but this is not intention to 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 create the dissection. But if you go retrograde with the reverse cause, it's the intention to 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 create the dissection and and to. Uh, I have a communication with this uh, dissection space to the true, true vessel lumen. This is, uh, you know, done done by 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 mistake. Yes. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And and you, you say it can be the end of the case or the beginning of the case. But I think what you saw is very nicely is that having a dissection on the other grade route may not be as bad thing, and you can always find ways to deal with it and get a successful result as long as you persist and know what you do. So that's a very nice demonstration there. And uh, I think that if we don't have any comments about this, I will show you the case that uh, is maybe uh, not so often uh, is seen in the U.S. because uh, you have a very strict criteria. We also, but we sometimes go, uh, you know, the, not. Uh, Outside of the rules or outside of the uh, uh, about the guidelines, and this is the case that I would like to present. Let's uh, one question that was asked from the that came from the from the web from the chat. The question is: yes. uh, Do you ever use side hole guides for vessels like this to prevent dissections like this, or you don't usually use? Side, do you ever use side hole guides for these cases? You know, this is the uh, the matter of, of of discussion because some operators use very often. I personally prefer for such cases as as uh, we saw the guide with the side holes. Of course, I personally okay. we will use the guide with the side holes for the uh, retrograde. If we uh, go with the um, Opposite side to to inject the contrast on it or to go by the left to the right. It, it depends on the morphology. If you have very huge left main and no disease. I don't use the the side holes to don't spend too much uh, of contrast. But if we have uh, some diseases left main, some plaque in the proximal LED, and it's better to to have a, a, a side holes to don't have a problem with, when the uh, accidentally, the uh, wire can uh, the, the the guide wire can can go inside the, the vessel. Okay. And this is the case of 50 years old male. He was a minor. Uh, he was uh, admitted to the another hospital with unstable angina. In this hospital, they performed the angio and referred him for cabbage. The patient was treated by me uh, in 2002 uh, with inferior MI and the, with primary PCR RCA. He had a good, very good function of the uh, left ventricle and normal ECG. And we have found in the, this uh, angio of free vessel disease, uh, severely stenosis LAD, completely occluded right, with JSTO score 2 and a completely occluded circ with JCTO score 1. And the patient asked me, you can see the, this is the left system, proximal occlusion of the circ, the sum disease within the left main, the right coronary artery, uh, the distal. Uh, visible from the left, and within the 
middle of the LED, very diffuse and uh, severe uh, stenosis. And this is the spider view. You can see also some, some plaque within the left brain, but not critical. And this is the right. This is the right, so long occlusion. But the patient, if we calculate the syntax score, the syntax score was 28.5. So according to the guidelines of uh, revascularization published in 2013, this patients with three vessel disease, uh, with the syntax score between 23 and 32, is the class 1A indication for the cabbage and a 3B indication for the, for the, for the, so the PCI is, uh, PCI is contraindicated. But the patient refused cabbage. He was the minor, he asked me to perform the, the, the PCI uh, because he wanted to uh, go back to his work. Uh, he afraid that uh, after surgery he will lose his work. So calculating the, those, those, uh, score for those two vessels, so I decided to go with PCI. And you can see in the same session, this is the wired uh, LAD. I implanted the BVS into the LAD. This is the result post uh, implantation of the BVS. Great. This is the final. Uh, and then I switched to uh, right coronary artery occluded. It was uh, done with two wires technique. The, you see the one is outside the vessel lumen. This is the old fashioned parallel wire technique, but sometimes I like it. Uh, and it was very. I see you put a BVS on the LAD. Um, yes. Would that be a problem if, you, if you're going to go retrograde, given that the BVS is a little higher profile than the other metallic stents? Uh, do you have any tra if you're going to go retrograde through a BVS, how, yes. an experience? This is a very good question, but uh, I thought that uh, this lesion could be open integrally. So for the very young man, 51 years old, it was, I think, the better option to 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 to, to uh, implant the BVS in the LAD, and especially that it was in the place that uh, no uh, septal branch uh, are coming and something like this. So we do not risk damages during the retrograde approach if it will be uh, necessary. And finally, I was able to open this. Uh, vessel with the parallel wire technique. And what was the wire again? It looks very nice, very nice crossing. What was the wire you used to cross? Uh, I used, the, it was the Ultimate 3. And the final result after stenting, there are some narrowing uh, this study, but uh, we should remember that uh, after uh, opening the vessel, the vessel is uh, collapsed and uh, very frequently, and uh, we, we can see a lot of uh, cases that some, this is uh, the 40 to 50% of stenosis. So after uh, some months, the artery will grow and it will be not so, 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 so huge stenosis as you will see. This is the result of the, of the right. And this is the, uh, the procedure 70 minutes, 34 minutes, 2.4 grays, 350 minutes of contrast. And after that, uh, if in two or three weeks uh, I admitted the patient for the CERC opening, it was very uh, easily uh, with a uh, single wire. I wired, of course, the marginal branch during the stenting to preserve this wire. And this is the result of the, uh, of the stenting of uh, CERC. And finally, this, this procedure took uh, no longer than 45 minutes. Uh, and in follow-up, the patient is completely uh, negative. 
uh, with symptoms. He worked as a miner, but you know this, uh, a lot of stands, young men, sometimes is silent with stenosis, so I, I, I afraid by him. So after 14 months after the uh, index procedure, I performed the control angio to be sure, and you can see that this part of the right coronary artery, it was diffusely disease is not so 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 bad. No stenosis within the stand uh, in the right coronary artery, and also preserved result in the LAD and in the CERC. So uh, no ischemia and the patient is stable. This the artery looks uh, pretty like the same after after the, the finishing the procedure. So this is the uh, end of this uh, this uh, of this uh, last case. And uh, I uh, waiting for your your comments and your your questions. These are again wonderful uh, wonderful case. Thanks for um, for sharing. Um, one of the uh, interesting things for this and actually the previous cases you saw is the radiation. Looks like you're able to do this with fairly low radiation doses. Um, any tips and tricks? Do you have like the newer machines that have uh, the new protocols, or you're very careful with fluoro low frames per second? What are your what is your processes for uh, keeping a low radiation dose? Is this is the I think that this is the matter of the uh, teamwork because uh, we also, of course uh, try to, to lower the dose radiation and also a technician are very careful and uh, if we do the CTO they diminish the pulse rate to the 7.5 or even sometimes for 6 or 4 in some moments this is the one the second one is also to 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 calculate the the amount of contrast and to try to use them don't, don't uh, have a uh, nephropathy the contrast uh, nephropathy but i think that uh, the most important is that of, of course new machine is the one and the second that you should think all the time about the radiation dose and now we have you know there's some paradox that people who are doing the regular angioplasty and do, do the CTO have during the complex procedure higher radiation dose than we have during the complex CTO procedure because they, they doesn't thought about this everybody thought that you should remember about, about the radiation during the CTO but uh, uh, majority of our colleagues don't remember to uh, uh, think about the radiation during the normal, regular uh, angioplasty. That's a good point, and you're right. Being careful about it is very important too. Watching it and making sure you don't exceed certain numbers. When do you usually stop? Uh, in if let's say you don't make enough progress, what is your typical cutoff for stopping the case if the radiation um, gets up? So uh, we are uh, alarmed by the technician when the radiation does go up to five, but we uh, try to doesn't exceed six or eight, eight or maximum. Okay. So eight, eight does of if you use the new machine and you, if you control the radiation, so to have a, a eight grades of radiation, you should perform the procedure for four or five hours. And have okay. the more two hours of fluoroscopy. Okay, that's exactly what we do as well. I think if we don't cross by eight, then usually we stop as well, just to minimize the dose. Um, another question that is uh, relevant to this is in terms of um, uh, which uh, which CTO do first. So, for example, in this case, you had two CTOs, right, coronary and circ. Uh, any any thoughts about which one to do first, like the RCA, as in this case? Or sometimes we do the we do the circ, and we know that at least in in progress CTO in the registry we're running the circs have usually been the tight the toughest lesions to open with the lower success rates. In your case, it worked pretty well, but we've seen that it may be the toughest one. So, do you have any any particular um, any particular sequence you follow for those cases, or or not really? The sequence for this case was uh, by the uh, you know by the clinic. The patient was admitted due to unstable angina a few days before. So uh, you very uh, rarely observe the unstable angina from the chronic total occlusion. So I thought that, that uh, uh, crucial for, for this patient is, is the stenosis of the LAD. This is the white point. 
So uh, I want to fix this problem uh, because during the CTO we have uh, some uh, pressure drop and so on, so on ischemia, and having uh, occluded uh, two vessels and having trying to open the right and having the problem with LED, you, you, you can put uh, you and your patient into big trouble. And the, the second also uh, matter is that if you started uh, with the uh, LED, so is, uh, after that is no step back. You should open those two vessels to, 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 to help the patient. So it's uh, you know, the matter of the philosophy, I think. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's very very useful. And sometimes, actually, I think in this case it didn't matter because the lady was clearly very tight. Sometimes, uh, what you have proposed is if you have, let's say, LAD and the RCA, and the LAD looks kind of maybe tight or not, they will try to fix the CTO first, unless you have to go retrograde, of course, and then do the FFR or the LAD, for example, after the CTO is open, because you may increase the FFR if you open up the CTO going to the donor vessel. Uh, by you know, point of three or point of four or more sometimes. So that, yes, I don't know if you ever seen that, but people are talking about this. That's that's, that's very very important point of view that we should remember that uh, uh, even not critically, stenosis artery supplying the area of occluded vessel could be ischemic, but if you you will open the vessel, the ischemia disappears, so this this lesion are not uh, significant. In the majority of cases, you should remember about this, especially in the patient with two or three vessel disease. Wonderful. Well, I think you know we really appreciate it. Again, thank you for for doing this wonderful webcast and also for staying up late. I know it's late; uh, uh, the hours are late now in Poland. But again, it's very very useful uh, for all of you who have been uh, um, watching it. Thank you for attending the webcast. Would like to thank uh, our sponsors, uh, which are Terumo and Abbott Vascular. And we're going to post it online too, so we'll send the links out very soon if you want to, if you missed it or your colleagues and you want to see it later on. So again, we'd like to thank uh, uh, Professor Brniarski for an excellent webcast. And again, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much for doing the webcast for us. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Bilakis, because it was a great honor for me to be with uh, you for this time and to share in some cases. I, uh, I think this is not, not the last time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.